Good morning, everybody. My name is Terry, and welcome to another Tuesday with Terry. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Appreciate it. Uh, my name is Terry, and I'm talking to you live from Austin, Texas, where the sun is hot, the barbecue is sweet, and all of those drinks are free when you hang out with me. The telephone rang the other day, and uh, the voice on the other end of the line said, Terry, uh, I've got some news for you. I said, well, what, what, what's going on? And they said, well, uh, do you know that your car is, uh, the lease on your car is uh, coming up to, it's, it's ending. It's right, it's a 36 month lease. I go, oh, I'm ending the lease on my car. And I said, okay, what do I have to do? They said, well, you need to bring it in and we need to talk to you about getting a new car. Well, that's always an exciting time, right? If you can do it without any hassles and you can do it hassle-free, it's always exciting to get a new car. Uh, but the reason I bring that up today is because, let me ask you a question. Have you ever finally stopped and taken a hard look at your life and say, maybe it's time to get some new things happening in my life? Maybe it's time for me to get a new dream. Maybe it's time for me to get a new vision. Maybe it's time for me to get on to something new. Maybe you're just not getting the motivation, the inspiration, the perspiration, the elevation, whatever it is from your existing dream. And maybe it's time for a new dream in your life. You know, it doesn't cost you anything to dream. So why wouldn't you do it? Take a look back at your last dream and I do this from time to time and I said these are the things matter of fact I was going to bring it in with me today and I didn't bring it it's actually in my backpack sitting in the car but I got a book and this is probably uh, seven eight years ago and it's called where will you be in five years and I filled that book out from front cover to back cover and I tossed it aside and my life went on I looked at it from time to time but was interesting about two years ago I pulled that book out and it was amazing to me how many things in that book that I had wished for and wanted for and where my values were and things I'd wanted for my family, things I'd wanted for myself, things I wanted for my career and my finances had actually, actually come to fruition. It actually happened. And so I went out and I bought another book. Where are you being another five years? <laughs> true story. That's a true story. Uh, and uh, start filling that book out. You ever find yourself in a situation, whether it's in a relationship, whether it's in your job, whether it's in your life, saying, how in the wide world of sports did I get here? How did this ever happen? And you find yourself where you're saying, it's probably ready, I'm ready for a change. My famous quote is, if you want to change some things in your life, you're going to have to change some things in your life. But I would tell you, you're going to have to get a new dream. You're going to have to get a new vision about what is it you want your future life to look like. And you talk about invention or I guess maybe reinvention, but inventing is when you come up with something that's never been done before. I guess you invent something. Reinvention is where you change or design something so differently that it's un almost unrecognizable. And so you've heard about that where companies have to reinvent themselves or you've heard about people that reinvent themselves, or we use that term kind of loosely, but I'm asking you, has it time? Is it time or is it about time for you to maybe take a look at that at reinventing yourself? Have you dreamed the dream and lived the dream? And maybe it's time for a new dream. I said this before when I was talking about closing, I use this, this term, but I think this is perfect for this occasion is uh, Chris Voss, who's a FBI negotiator, wrote the book, uh, uh, Never Split the Difference. But he says, don't be so committed to what you want that you're not willing to take something better. Do you find yourself maybe in that situation today where you're so committed to what you wanted? You want it so bad. You're so committed to it. You'll do anything to make it happen. And you think that is the answer. And the truth of the matter is, have you ever had a situation in your life where you thought it wasn't going to work out, but when you went through that door and you got to the other side, 60, 90, 120 days later, it actually was better than the situation that you actually wanted. 
Oh, can I tell you the stories of how that's happened to me in my life? I can tell you the stories of when I left a company or I got let go from a company and I thought it was all was gone. I thought I identified myself with that company. And little did I know that on the other side in 60 or 90 or 120 days later, I would be discovered or I would discover or I would make a connection that would lead me down a path to even greater, better opportunities. I'll give you an example. I used to live in New York City and I love New York City. I thought it was where everything, the heart of the world was. I thought there was no better place than being in New York City. And you've heard him, Frank Sinatra say it, you know, if you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. And I was gonna make it in New York City. And I love the city. I love the hustle, the bustle. I love the jazz, the juice, the energy of the city. I loved it. And I thought, man, there's no better place that I could be than New York City. Then this is where everything happens. I can find all the financing. I can get any business opportunity. I could get any job that I wanted. And it all can happen right here in the nucleus, the center of the, I thought that was the center of the world. <clears throat> I got let go from a job. I ended up getting hired to go to Tampa, Florida. And I remember driving to work my very first day in Tampa, Florida, from Tampa over to St. Petersburg. And I had to drive across the seven mile bridge as they call it. And the water was blue and the sky was blue and the palm trees were swaying in the wind and I felt like I was on vacation. And the more time that I spent in Tampa, Florida, the more I realized that the quality of life I didn't have to deal with traffic. I didn't have to deal with planes, trains, and automobiles. I didn't have to pay the train fares, the subway fares. I didn't have to deal with the congestion. I didn't have to deal with the smog. I didn't have to deal with the taxi driver. I didn't have to deal with everything that I was dealing with in New York City. And it was so open. And I could look out across the Tampa Bay, the water across the bay, the Skyway Bridge, as, as we do. And I was like, this is an unbelievable lifestyle. And I thought my lifestyle was so good in New York until I went to Tampa Bay and I saw the lifestyle of what it was like to live in Florida. I'm just saying, that's why they call it the Sunshine State, right? And my lifestyle absolutely changed. Don't be so committed to what you want that you're not willing to give it up for something better. Many of you have your lives on cruise control. Many of you get up the same day uh, as you did the same time this morning, as you did yesterday morning, as you did the morning before that, you do the same things in the morning. You get the coffee, you read a little bit. Maybe you get ready, you take a shower, you get ready for work, you get in the car, you drive to work and you don't even know how you got to work because you get off on the same exit every single day and it's on cruise control and you walk in and you say hi to everybody and you sit down at your computer and you get on your emails and you go through your emails and da 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 and it goes, oh, and I'm like, oh my word. You are on cruise control, man. You are not the architect of your life. You are not designing a future for yourself. You are going through this world, letting life happen to you rather than you making and planning and creating your destiny. How do you want to feel about things in six months from now? How do you want to feel? How happy do you, what makes you happy? How do you want to feel about your relationships? How do you want to think about your finances? How do you want to uh, think about your health? Are you going through cruise control in life about your health? And you're saying, well, it is what it is. No, it's not what it is. You get to choose what you want to eat. You get to choose if you want to go for a walk or a bike ride or to exercise and burn some calories. You get to make those choices every day and you get to be the design, the architect of your body. Uh, you get to be the architect and design of your mind. What are you putting into your mind? The good, the pure, and the positive. Are you reading the good books? Are you watching the good uh, videos? Or are you zoning out on Netflix? and cable. I don't know. But you get to make those choices. You get to decide what you want to eat. You get to decide what you want to do. You get to decide what you want to listen to. You get to decide the friends that you want to associate with. Pick your five closest friends. Take a look at their income and your income is probably the average of those five people. If you want to have a higher income, you've got to start associating with different people. When's the last time that you did something new in your life? When's the last time that you tried something new in your life? You ever watch that uh, movie uh, called Yes Man? 
uh, uh, movie about Jim Carrey. And I forget exactly how it goes, but he has to say yes to everything. <laughs> and so what happens, he starts doing all these things that he's never done before, right? But just imagine if you had to say yes to everything. You had an idea and you say, yeah, I'm going to try it. I mean, let me just ask you a question. Have you ever tried playing the guitar? Have you ever tried playing pickleball? I mean, pickleball is the fastest growing sport in America right now, right? 26 million people playing pickleball, maybe more than that now. But I'm just saying, have you even tried it before you poo-pooed it and said, I couldn't do it? Uh, uh, when's the last time you actually went to a new gym for a workout where all the equipment might have been in different places and you actually had to think about your exercise, you had to think about your workout? What about the car that you drive? Have you ever thought about maybe just trading it in and getting a different car, trying something new? I had a unique experience. You know, I'm, I'm a kind of probably an old fashioned kind of guy that likes a gas powered car, but it was time. I told you about the car, right? It was time for a new car. So guess what I did? I went out and test drove a Tesla, right? And that thing was crazy. I mean, that thing uh, wasn't even like a car <laughs> to me. It was more like a computer with wheels is what it was. It was a computer with wheels. Uh, it was crazy. I know that's silly for some of you, but for me, it was a big experience. <laughs> Have you ever tried archery? Have you ever tried dancing? Have you ever tried taking dancing lessons? And what do they say? They say the people, there's a study out, I think, that says that the people that spend one hour at least three times a week or three hours per week on any hobby or anything, anything really, if you do that for a year consistently, you can be in the top 5% of the people in that category. If you haven't played golf, if you haven't played tennis, if you haven't played pickleball, try something new. Go on a hike. Go bird watching. I don't know what it is. Go rock climbing. Go visit a national park. But I'm saying, when is the last time you have actually done something new? Sit down and take a look. If you can't imagine what it would look like to do something new, go grab a couple different magazines and just start leafing through magazine and looking at pictures. And you can begin to go, man, that might be an interesting thing to try. I wouldn't mind maybe trying that or trying that, right? Do you know how to swim? Some people don't know how to swim, but maybe it's time for you to learn how to swim. You ever surf? Maybe it's time to learn how to surf. And I know those are all activities that maybe you say, well, I would have done it if I was 20 years old or I would do it. It's never too old to start learning something new. Try to figure it out. Try to learn something new. You see, in everything in life, there's a beginning, there's a middle, and there's an end. Everything, including life itself. You can't change the past, but you certainly can live in the moment. And that is the time that you have right in front of you. It's the time that you have in front of your face today to do something, to take action, to make some choices about what the rest of your life is going to be like. And it starts with you thinking about what you want your life to be. And the studies show us that people that have something to look forward to actually have dopamine release in their brains and they get more excited than actually accomplishing the activity itself. What are you looking forward to in life? Do you have anything you're looking forward to? What is your purpose? Purpose-driven life. If you haven't read that book, please get it and read it. <clears throat> you know what it feels like the morning you wake up and you're about to take a trip. You're excited. The morning you wake up and you're about to try something new, you're excited. The morning you wake up and you're about to go to a family reunion or a high school reunion or a college reunion, you're excited. You're going to try working out. It's the new year. New year, new you. It's a brand new time to get started. New year's resolutions. And you're going to start the health club or the gym for the first time. You're excited. You're nervous. You're anxious. But I'm telling you, do you have anything to look forward to? If you don't, you need to spend a little bit of time doing that. I would encourage you that maybe it's time for a new dream. Maybe it's time for something new. You know, every time we come to the end of a year and we get into looking forward into the new year, 2024 is about as upon us. This is the time for reflection. This is the time for looking back. And this is the time for us saying, this is who I want to be. Uh, 
next year. I have a birthday coming up in, uh, in a week here. And uh, I look at myself and I say, who is the person that I am today? And that person at the end, in, in a week from today, and that person will be gone. That, that person at that age is going to be done and over with. Who's the person I want to be? What's the human being that I want to be this year of my life? And I would encourage you to do the same. I would encourage you to look at the stove of life. And instead of looking at that stove of life saying, come on stove now, you gotta give me some heat. You gotta put something out. You gotta cook, cook it up for me. I would encourage you to start planning and designing you putting something into that stove of life and you putting something in to making that stove work for you. That's your life, that's your plan, that's the architect, that's the guy, the designer of who you want to be. Have a little gratitude, be thankful for the past, take a look at what you can do today to make a difference and to start planning for your future. And then th take a look and take a piece of pen, uh, a piece of paper and a pen and write down exactly some things that you want to look forward to. Who do you want to be a happier, healthier, better, stronger you for next year? How do you do that? What are the things that are going to be new that you're going to try? What are the things that you'll be able to look back on and say, I never knew this about that particular hobby. But this year, I was able to learn a little bit more about that. Maybe it's time for a new dream. My name's Terry. I'm your friend.